Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy, and in this video, we're going to discuss impact testing. Now, impact tests are used to determine the toughness of a sample of material. Now, I choose my words carefully there. The reason why it's to test the toughness of a sample of material is because this is dependent on the size, or more importantly, the cross-section of the material, as we'll see in a moment. Now, there's two different types of impact test. We have a Sharpie test, and we have an IZOD test. And over on the left here, we see diagrams to show the differences. If first of all, we look at the Sharpie test, what we notice is that the impact force is going to cause this to bend. It places a bending stress on the piece of material. And what we have is we have a notch cut in the center to enable the piece of material to fracture at a specific point. What we're interested in in the Sharpie test is the area or the cross-sectional area at the notch, because that's the point where the material is going to fail. Providing we use samples of the same size and same cross-section, then we're able to get a comparison of how different materials perform under impact. Now the IZOD test is slightly different, and instead what we have is a kind of shearing action. Once again, we have a notch cut in the material, and the reason for that is to ensure that the material is going to fail at the correct place. And once again, we would have calculated the area at the notch, the cross-sectional area. And with the IZOD test, what we end up with is a shearing action. So let's focus on the IZOD test for a moment. And what we see at the bottom here is an example of the machine that's used, the IZOD tester. Now what happens here is we lift the hammer on the right hand side, and in doing so, we give it potential energy. When we release that hammer, it's going to swing and it's going to strike our test piece, which is going to be positioned in the center here. Providing we give the hammer enough energy by lifting it high enough and using a heavy enough hammer, then that piece of material is going to fail. And as it fails, it's going to absorb some impact energy. Now what that means is that the hammer isn't going to swing as high as it was released from, because some of that energy is going to be lost. And what we end up with is two readings. We end up with a starting reading, and a finishing reading, and from that, we're able to calculate the amount of energy absorbed by the test piece. And as you would expect, different materials will be capable of absorbing different amounts of energy. Let's take a look at some typical results from this type of test. So here we have some results that have been generated from an impact test. And the first thing that we notice is that a number of different materials have been tested, aluminium, copper, nylon, mild steel, acrylic, and zinc. Now on the y-axis, on the left-hand scale, we have the amount of impact energy absorbed. Now what this isn't factoring in is the cross-section of the material. So in actual fact, this should be impact energy per unit area, and that would be dependent on the cross-section of our material, but at least it gives us a representation of what happens in the test. From this, we can immediately see that our toughest material is copper, because it's able to absorb the most impact energy. But the other thing that we notice is that there's variations through our different materials. And the variations are variations with respect to temperature. So on this bottom scale here, we have temperatures ranging from minus 150 degrees C all the way up to 100 degrees C. Now what we notice is that between those ranges, the toughness of copper is unaffected. But let's take mild steel as an example. What we notice with mild steel is the toughness varies dramatically with temperature. So at low temperatures here, we see the amount of energy absorbed being very low, but between minus 100 degrees and minus 50 degrees, we see a huge increase in the toughness of our steel. What that demonstrates is that at low temperatures, steel loses a lot of its toughness, particularly mild steel. And then for temperatures above zero degrees, we see it having a comparable toughness to copper. Now aluminium appears to work the opposite. At lower temperatures, aluminium's tougher. So at minus 150 to minus 50 degrees C, aluminium has its highest toughness. But by the time we reach 50 and 100 degrees C, it appears to have lost some of that toughness. It's less able to absorb impact at higher temperatures. And we also see variations in our other materials, zinc, and nylon increasing in toughness at higher temperatures, and acrylic remaining fairly constant 
with the lowest toughness of each of those materials. So the important things to take from this video is first of all how the test is performed and secondly what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the toughness or the amount of impact energy a material can absorb. We also need to make sure we standardise the test by using the same cross-sectional area for each test piece. And finally, what we notice is that toughness is often temperature dependent. What this means is that there's another factor for engineers to consider when toughness is an important characteristic of a component.